Hi guys, hello, how are you? I'm so excited to talk to you. Um, I'm actually look somewhat presentable today, so I'm like, let me go live um, and chat with you guys. So, first of all, my name is Patty. Hi guys, I'm on my way to the post office right now. I gotta pick up some stamps. Some 70 cent stamps hi Michelle hello so Michelle I know we don't know each other but thank you so much for putting this group together because one of the one of the biggest like reasons why I was telling my team to get on this and when you so graciously shared that with us so thank you um, is that you it's so good to connect with other leaders who have those same goals which is what I'm gonna touch on in a second hey Lori Yes, girl, this is the one from the Sense Family store. I actually, after I bought this, this one has like the glitter on it. I'm not usually too much of a glitter person, but it's it's very subtle. So I don't know if you guys can see that. It's subtle, so I like it. But then I realized, I was like, wait, is this the shirt that we're going to get in the SFR kit that we get before we go to SFR? So I may or may not end up with two even though it said that this is not the shirt that we're gonna get, I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means that that one that comes in the kit is no glitter. I have no idea. But anyway, hi guys, hello. I am just sitting down real quick. Well, I'm not sitting, I'm in my car because I'm on the go, but I pulled over real quick to talk to you. So um, I wanna talk to you guys about, um, you know, first of all, like I was saying, this, sorry, my mind's all over the place. You're gonna realize that through this video that I'm like a legit squirrel. So first of all, as I was saying, thank you so much, Michelle, for putting this together um, because I think it's so important when um, people who have the same goals and aspirations connect with one another. Um, and it's just, you thrive in that way. So thank you so much for putting this together. Um, and so far I've been watching like so many videos in here and everybody's got something to offer. Everybody has some, you know, tip or inspiration or something that they can, you know, offer to somebody. And what I love about it most is that, especially you're going to find too as a director, before I even get into my tips, as a director and as a leader, you're going to find eventually, you're going to feel like you're saying the same thing over and over and over. And it's like, how many times can you tell your team that the sky is blue? But all of a sudden, somebody else can come and say it in a different way. And words resonate differently with different people. And so that's why I think it's really important for your team and you guys, us all together as leaders, to hear from each other. It is so important to hear because you never know who you're going to connect to and you never know who you're going to resonate with, okay? So anyway, hi guys. Hello. Hey, Josie. I see my girls on here. Okay. So I'm going to give you 10 boss tips to director, okay? I'm not a freaking expert, you guys. Like, I've been with Sensi going on three years will be October, or October will be three years. Um, I actually promoted very quickly. I hit director in six months. Um, actually, it was the end of my fifth month that I hit director because my first month I didn't even work my business sad but true um, and so you know I'm just gonna tell you what I know like I said I'm always growing evolving I don't know everything but I can tell you what works and what is working for me currently and what has helped me along the way okay so 10 boss tips to director I ramble I go off on tangents and I squirrel hard so I'm gonna try and stay on topic um, if you have questions let me know and maybe I'll just answer them at the end so that I don't drift okay because um, I want to be conscious of your guys time so 10 boss tips to, to director. So like I said, I promoted in six months. The reason why I promoted so fast with Sensi was because I literally started recruiting people out the gate. The first tip I need to give you guys is recruit all the people. I know that that sounds like intimidating, but you literally, that needs to be like your number one focus as a director, as a business owner in this business, okay? You have to be willing to share the business opportunity with everybody. I joined in October of 2015. I had my launch party on November 1st. Like I said, I waited an entire month. So technically, I, I started November 1st. On November 23rd, I had my first recruit. And then from there, it just started speedballing, honestly. And I think it was because I was willing to share it with people. And I saw the value in this business, okay? Not to get into my whole Sensi story, but Sensi has allowed me. I joined when I was coming off maternity leave with my second baby, my daughter. And so at that point, I saw the value that it could give me in not having to go back to work. And that's why I joined. I didn't want to go back to work and I wanted to make cash. And I saw that it gave me that. So I started sharing that with people and I started letting people know how this business can help them so I'm not gonna do a whole recruiting training that's a totally separate topic but you have to be willing to just share the business opportunity opportunity with people 
by leading with the opportunity. Um, you know, how are you posting on Facebook? Are you showing people the Sensi life that you're living? What has Sensi given you? If you can think of 10 to 15 ways that Sensi has added value to your life, and share that with people, it's gonna be so much easier to recruit them. Because if you have somebody who says, oh, you know, I, I wanna join Sensi to make some extra cash, and you're like, well, girl, I joined to make some extra cash, you could totally do this. Like, it can give you that and more, right? So that's like a whole training topic. But like, leading with the opportunity, planting seeds with people, and continually asking them, okay? So you have to have a dream team list ready. I have a folder on my desk. Um, I don't have it here with me, but it's a folder that I keep, and it has a list of people who are my dream team, people that I've had conversations with, whether it's people that I just chatted with, like at a party last week, or whether it's people I talked to two years ago. You never know, because the thing is, timing is everything. So you have to have that list ready to go um, so that you can follow up, because your following up with that person can make or break them joining, okay? So just make sure you are sharing the business opportunity. And honestly, it sounds intense, but they say on average, like the SSD plan is to sell 2,000 PRV a month and two recruits a month. And they say that if you do that, you'll hit SSD in two years. It's like the SSD two year plan. I mean, guys, I've been with Sensi for over two years and I haven't, I haven't hit that plan, but, oh, sorry, I just spit. Um, but I also, I wasn't consistent in that. I didn't always have 2,000 PRV. I didn't always have two recruits a month, but I can tell you, I have consistently recruited at least one person a month, if not more. On months that we have specials, $49 joint specials, all that stuff, of course there's more. I think the most I've ever recruited in, in one month is eight people. And I'm not saying that to like boast about myself. I'm saying that to let you know that you have to be willing to share with anybody and everybody. This business is an opportunity and you have a gift that you can share with people. So why not tell them how they can add value to their lives based on your own experiences, okay? So that's the last I'm gonna talk about recruiting because I could go off on a tangent about it, but make sure that you have that list running. And even if they say no, or even if they say not right now, it's okay, keep them on your list, put them in your back pocket and follow up with them when the time is right, okay? I gotta turn down my air. The next tip that I have for you is act like a director. And these tips are not, not in any order or whatever, okay? But my next tip for you guys is act like a director. I don't care what your title is. If you wanna be a director, you have to act like a director. I always joke with my team and I always say, when I was a lead consultant, I thought who I was. Because I, when I was a lead consultant, I remember I had three people on my team. I had a Facebook page, I was sending emails, I was trying to organize team trainings. At that point, there wasn't Zoom, but we had, um, I don't know, something. There was like some like app or something like that. I was trying to organize all the things. Alicia, hey girl. Um, you know, I was doing all the things. You have to, like, if you want director, you have to act like a director. Just, let me tell you this too, guys. I'm, I'm ranting right now. Director is just a title. Your title means nothing. At the end of the day, we all go back to certified consultant, okay? The first of the month, even if you hit director, what good is that title if you're not getting paid to your title consistently? And you're a certified consultant on the first of the month, every single month, once you're certified. So, you know... Your title, once you hit director, it, there's nothing stating in that title that all of a sudden you're gonna know all the things and be able to lead a team. This starts now. You have to start these these actions now and, and treating your team as if you are a director now, no matter how big or small. I don't care if you have one person on your team. You have to act like a director because when you promote to director, that transition is gonna be a lot easier for you instead of you not leading your team at all, not really caring to guide them and have them look to you for guidance. And then what's gonna happen is when you promote to director, your team is not going to look at you that way and it's going to be a very hard transition for you to all of a sudden now you have your team page and everybody needs to you know they're not engaging on there because they're used to engaging on your uplines page like your director's page um you have to instill those leadership skills early it is never too early to start those skills so what can you do even if you're a lead star superstar like i said i think if you have at least three to five people on your team you should have a team page honestly um and you could still interact on your director's page i encourage you to do that because that's where the action is that's where a lot of the participation is and that's where they're going to build that unity but you also want to make sure that they are looking to you for guidance okay so on your team page you're providing resources um, you are showing them how you're working your business. Their success is your success. So 
the, the moment you get it out of your mind that this is not about you, it's about helping others, it's about teaching others how to work this business. And when you help others, you provide resources, you show them how to work based on things that are working for you, they're going to take to that. And they're going to, you know, they're going to look to you as that person, you know, for guidance. Um, I'm sorry, my air is just like blowing on me. Um, so act like a director if you want to be a director, okay? You could challenge your team, um, hold booking blitzes with them. You can offer little incentives. Like right now I'm doing um, with the Sensi Go that we have, which actually I have my Sensi Go BRV for the win. Um, the Sensi Go where they get this in their kit this month. I'm, I have a challenge going on in my group right now. Every person that they recruit, they get an entry to win a Sensi Go. So you don't have to be like, of course, the larger your group is, obviously the more beneficial it'll be for everyone. But you don't have to be a director to do these things. You have to act like a director if you want it. Okay. So start today. Don't wait until you promote to star superstar excited. Act now, start now. Like I cannot stress that enough. That is the, the biggest thing that I've ever did when I started recruiting. And like I said, I joke and I say, I thought who I was when I was a lead consultant. I had no idea like what came with leadership, but I wanted it. And I'll be honest with you, when I came into Wickless Luster, so Kristen Ingalls, by the way, she's my superstar director. That's who's in the downline I'm in. Um, she's also my sponsor, little girl. Um, but she, I remember, she added me to Wickless Luster when I was a new consultant, and I saw her making a video of her basket parties, and that was before Facebook Live. You had to actually upload your video. Uh, she made a, a picture or a video of Facebook, her basket parties, and I remember thinking to myself, I want that. Like, I want to lead a team. I want to make videos. I want to show people how to do this. I want that. Instantly, as a new consultant, I had that fire because, well, I don't really know why, because I just, I just was like drawn to that for whatever reason. So that's why you have to do that as a act like the director that you want to be. You have to show people how to get this done. And nobody's going to get inspired by you if you're sitting on the sidelines, okay? The next tip that I have from you is lead from the front, which kind of goes into what I was just talking about. As a leader, you're going to hear this a lot. Know the way, go the way, show the way. You have to lead from the front because eventually your team is going to mirror your actions. And sometimes that is a very hard pill to swallow. Sometimes we say, you know, we think, you know, our teams are not engaged and are not participating. And, you know, yes, your team isn't really a reflection upon you because everybody's their own business owner. However, you have to lead from the front. And if you're not engaging, if you're not participating, if you're not booking parties, if you're not recruiting, if you're not going to events or trainings or anything like that, what makes you think that your team is going to do that? And what kind of leader are you if they're going to, like, how could they look to you for guidance or as somebody that they're going to want to learn from if you're not even doing those things either? You have to lead from the front. And one of the best ways that you can do that is showing your team how you're working. Utilize Facebook Live. If you don't have a team page yet, go on your director's page and do a live video on how you're putting your basket parties together or how you are front loading your calendar this month. Show them how you are working. Because the thing is, they say that in order for leaders to be inspired, they ha or in order, in order for leaders to inspire, they have to be inspired. So you yourself, which I'm going to talk about in a second, you have to get inspired and engaged and and they're not going to be inspired or want to do what you're doing unless they're seeing you do it. You must lead from the front. That is like the biggest thing that I tell my leaders because at the end of the day, like it's their business to work, but they also need you as a leader have to provide resources for your team. So whether that be resources from the training center, your team page and the file section, Upload stuff from the workstation. Go on the business references tab. Pull up the PDFs on there. Upload them to your Facebook page. Have an album for new consultants or however you want to create it. There's lots of ideas out there, you guys, okay? Um, but you must provide resources and show your team how you work and you have to lead from the front. Every, like, every day, you have to lead from the front, okay? Um, the next tip that I have for you is your business comes first, so are you front loading your calendar every single month? Are you striving to hit your 500 PRV every single month? If you don't have 500 PRV, even if your team hits numbers, you're not getting paid on your downline. So that's number one. Um, but your follow-up, your sales, your parties, your recruits, all have to start with you first. Again, it goes into leading from the front. How are you gonna lead a team and teach them how to do these things if you're not doing them yourself? Hey, Stacy. 
Um, you know, sorry, I have some notes here too, by, by the way. Um, but you, you have to, your business comes first because what good are you in going to be leading your team if you don't even have your own business in check? And I know Chloe was asking me to show you guys, but I have a timer, like an actual kitchen timer that I got on Amazon, oh, excuse me, on Amazon. And I literally, like, the first thing that I do every single day is my follow-up. That's probably one of the most income-producing things you can do, if not the number one income-producing thing you can do in your business is follow-up. Because you following up is going to make or break someone buying from you, hosting with you, joining your team, right? So every single morning, I spend 15 to 20 minutes, I set my kitchen timer, and as soon as it's done, it goes ding! like it's a turkey and then I'm like okay I'm good and that's what I do that's I, I treat it like I'm clocking into my business I come up to my office I have my follow-up binder in front of me I follow up my customers or anybody who's thought about hosting you know I've, I've had conversations with about hosting anybody who's you know thinking about joining I do my follow-up in 15 to 20 minutes here and there and then guess what if I don't do anything else the rest of the day then at least I know I did my most income producing things and the things that matter. So that's why it's important that you are um, working your business first, ultimately, okay? And then again, 500 PRV should be your goal, like as a leader. Um, no matter what, I'm sorry. I'm trying to hold my notes here, but it's not working. I guess I'll do this. Um, I like to have notes so I can stay on topic. Um, the next goal that, I'm, the next goal, the next note that I have, the next note. Let me get my, my mind in check. Um, the next tip that I have for you guys is to set goals for yourself. So again, I mean, I guess this all kind of goes in order. Your business comes first, but you are not going to be able to work your business unless you have goals for yourself. So your monthly minimum goal as a, as a leader, I don't care, lead consultant and above, not even director, as a leader should be 500 PRV in that month. Every single month. That should be your goal. Don't worry about, oh, I need to get active, 200. No, you need 500 PRV as a leader. That is what you are required of once you become a leader. Because guys, why are we promoting? Why do we want these titles? Why do we want to grow up the compensation plan if we're not even getting paid at our titles? What is the point? Your title means nothing at the end of the day. I'm sorry to say it like that. But your title is literally just a title. It means nothing if you're not getting paid that way. And don't you want to, don't you want to like build your business and don't you want to promote and grow in order to get paid that way? We don't, you know, a title means nothing. That's the, you know, that's the best I can tell you. So set that goal to have 500 PRV. Okay. Um, set goals, like how many parties you want to, you want to have that month. You have to know, again, it goes with front loading your calendar, understanding which days you're available to party, which days you're not available to party. Um, you know, following up with people and saying, okay, I have the 6th, 7th, and 8th. Let me know which one works for you. Be in control of your calendar. This is your business. How many recruits do you want to have that month? You know, like I said, I strive to have at least two recruits a month if possible. If, if at all, it's at least one. Like I make it my mission to follow up with people, plant seeds and all that stuff. But you have to set goals for yourself and hold yourself accountable to those, okay? Um, and also, with goal setting is to keep your eye on the prize because the, the reality of this business is that you're gonna hear no and you're gonna get discouraged. And there's gonna be discouraging moments, but if you let that affect you, then then you're not you're not going to move your business forward. So just know that no matter what, like you have your eye on director, all of you here because you want to be a director. If don't take your eyes off that. Do whatever it takes to get there, okay? Um and you know what? This too like everybody's journey is different. So just because I promoted in 6 months or the next person promoted in a year or the next person promoted in 3 months, whatever that is, their journey is their own. So if you let things like that affect you and you're comparing yourself to somebody else's journey, that's going to hold you back too. Don't compare, worry about like the road in front of you and focus on your goals and hold yourself accountable into keeping those goals. Like set deadlines for yourself throughout the month. You know, say I want, my goal for me personally is 2000 PRV every single month and I work my butt off in order to get that. I don't always hit it, but that is my goal every single month, okay? The next tip that I have for you is invest in your mind. And I know I ramble, okay? You have to get inspired. Again, leaders inspire when they're inspired. How are you going to lead your team and inspire your team if you're not even invested into your own, um, you know, training and, and personal development and all that is so important. Attending trainings and events, the fact that you guys are sitting on here watching this means you're hungry, you want it. Um, those of you in this group, right? Or even like the Sensi training call, the Tuesday call. 
every Tuesday that Sensi has, you not only like say, oh guys, hey, it's training Tuesday, everybody go listen to a training call. Are you listening to the training call? You have to be, be learning because here's the thing, you have never, you're never going to get to a point where you arrive. There's always going to be something to learn. And I think when you have that mindset where you don't know everything, like I think a lot of times people get to, well, I'm good at booking parties, so I'm not going to change anything up. Or I'm good at, my hostess coaching is working now, so I'm good. There's always something to learn all the time. And, and what worked two years ago may or may not even work today. So you have to make sure that you are continually investing and in learning and, and adapting and applying the things that you're learning. Okay reading books. If you're not a book person, there's audio tapes, podcasts you can listen to. If you just go on Pinterest and search like leadership podcasts or leadership um, development or, or even just personal development, like you will find so much stuff. Okay. Studying the industry and other Sensi leaders. Okay. But not only other Sensi leaders, people outside Sensi, outside the industry. This is a tricky thing though. If you are a person who gets distracted by shiny objects, you shouldn't do that. Okay. Um, um, because you have to know, like, I think there are so many people out in this world, in this industry who have a lot to offer. I actually get a lot of my ideas from people in other direct sales companies, like on YouTube and all over. I know I have it in me where I'm like, it doesn't distract me. Like I know I'm sensi ride or die. So I could take nuggets of information from someone else from another company and be fine with that and apply it in my own business. But don't let that distract you. My point is, is that there's a whole wealth of information from people all in the industry and it doesn't just revolve in sensi. Of course, sensi is the best company. Like, yes, you should be sensi ride or die, but be open and willing to hear from other leaders go on YouTube and search network marketing leadership. Like there's so many ideas and, and you know, tips and stuff. You can go on Instagram and follow like leadership accounts where they'll post like motivational quotes, like whatever inspires you, you have to do that. Okay. They say that when you do what successful people do, you will become successful. So study those people, see what they're doing and watch and watch how they post. I'll never forget when I came into this, I, I would watch Kristen and Chloe, to be honest with you guys. I would watch them and I'd be like, oh my gosh, they post so good on social media. And actually that was what attracted me to Kristen was the way she posted on social media. And so I watched them. I studied them as new consultants. I kind of imposed myself a little bit on them and you know, I, I wanted to be like that. I aspire to be like that. Okay. So do what successful people do. You will become successful. Number seven. I'm trying not to ramble. Hang in here with me. Focus on your leaders, not your leeches. This is something that I'll never forget that Chloe actually told me. And in Disney of 2016, I actually it was the first time I met Kristen and Chloe on the Disney trip. Okay. Um, she had told me focus on your leaders, not your leeches. That is something that will always stick out to me. Okay. So what does that mean? That means work with the willing and love the rest. If you're in Chloe's download, you probably have heard this before, but work with the willing and love with love the rest work with the people who are showing you, not just saying they want to grow, not just saying they want to hit director, not just saying that they want to book parties or they want to recruit people who are actually trying, who, who deserve your, your time, who deserve you digging into them. And then love the rest, meaning you can still treat everyone equally the same, provide the same resources you need to on, you know, the team page for them, answer questions if you have to. But like for the most part, you have to work with the willing, the people who want it, because at the end of the day, guys, yes, you know, we make connections and relationships with Sensi, but this is a business and you have a business to grow. So you must work with the, you know, the, the people who want it. And, you know, I would expect you to expect your, the same of your leaders as well. Okay. Um, so focus on your leaders and this also goes for not just leaders, but your new consultants, because unfortunately what happens is sometimes like more seasoned consultants who may have lost that sense of fire in them, sometimes they lose that and it's very hard to reignite back in them. And so you may have a star consultant on your team who has a t who had a team of like eight or nine people at one point and all of a sudden they kind of gave up along the way or things happened in their life, right? Life happens. And so they took a step back and then the whole team goes with that. It slowly starts to decrease. I see it happen all the time. And honestly, the bigger your group grows, the more you're going to grow and then you're going to go down. The more you're going to grow and then you're going to go down because that's just what happens in this business. But this is why it's so important to continually recruit and bring in new blood as we call it, right? Um, focus on your new consultants and really like, like act on the fact that they're new because new consultants have the passion 
that that um, seasoned leaders may or may not have anymore. They're excited about their business in a way that you even may not be so excited anymore. It doesn't mean that you still don't love your business or people on your team don't love their business, but new consultants have like this magical like passion behind that. So you have to act on that as a new consultant and make sure that you are just digging into them, providing recognition, shouting them out on their, you know, on the team page or sending them a quick text and say, Hey girl, I see you rocking. I saw you went live today. I know that that was a big step for you. Like, you know, encourage them to do better. Okay. New consultants as well as your leaders. Okay. You could provide recognition for them. Like I said, text, postcards. You don't have to be a director to send out postcards. You don't have to be a director to do your top team sales. If you're, if you are like a star consultant, superstar consultant, and you have a team five to eight, 10 people, right? You can do shout outs on your director's page. Hey, this is the top sales in my, you know, my team right now. There's nothing saying that you need to be a director in order to do these things, okay? Um, and also with the leaders is coaching calls. So again, you don't have to be a director to do, to do this, but whether you wanna call it a coaching call or a FaceTime date or a one-on-one -on -one or whatever you wanna call it, you have to connect with that person face-to-face, -face, okay? It can't just be like on the phone. Whether it's, you know, I think group meetings are good too, but one-on-one -on -one is going to be so beneficial because the best thing that you can do as a leader, and I know I'm rambling, guys. I really appreciate you staying in here with me. It's just that I get so passionate about leadership. It's literally something that came within me that I never knew that I had, and I, I just love helping people and leading them to, you know, whatever they're looking for. But as a leader, the best thing that you can do as a leader in not only coaching people, um, but just leading your team as a whole is to understand their struggles. Because if you don't know what somebody's struggling in, how can you help them? How can you overcome that? It's the same thing when it comes to recruiting. If you don't know why somebody wants to join Sensi, how are you going to tell them how Sensi could benefit them if you don't know what why they want to join. So it's the same thing. You have to figure out. Um, one of the biggest things that I ask my leaders or people that I'm talking to when I'm having these coaching calls or face-to-face, -face, I say, you know, what's the biggest struggle right now that you're facing in your business? What is the biggest, like, you know, like, what's your biggest struggle? And oftentimes you're going to hear booking parties, recruiting, I can't get my team motivated. So in that time, if you know what that is and they say, oh, booking parties, okay, girl, let's talk about your calendar. What does your calendar look like right now? Like, I know that you had trouble, you're having some trouble booking parties. How many people are you asking in this moment? So you can kind of like break it down for them and help them know, but you you have to understand their struggles. That's the biggest thing that you can do as a leader, okay, in order to help them overcome that based on your own personal experiences. Okay. Next tip. I have three more and then I promise I'm done. Find your people. This is huge. This is why I love this group so much because there's so many people in here who want the same thing. And it is so important that you surround yourself with the same people, with people who have the same goals and aspirations that you do. Okay. I'm going to shout her out. She knew I was going to do it. Honestly, I wanted to do a side by side video with her, but Colleen Regan, she will probably come on here at some point and talk to you guys. You guys are going to love her. She's literally like my sensey ride or die. I mean, of course I have so many amazing like wax besties in this business. I love you, Stacey. What's up, Ashley? Anyway, um, like there's so many people you connect with, but you know, I have like Colleen's just like my person. And that's another thing that Chloe had said to me that time in Disney. She said, you'll find your people. And so I think it's very important where you surround yourself with people who have those same goals and aspirations for you because you feed off each other, right? Like in this group, everybody wants the same thing. Everybody's shooting for that and giving each other tips and ideas. So the way you find your people, because I remember when she told me that, I was like, well, how am I going to find my people? I have always looked up to Kristen and Chloe, as I'm sure many of you do on here. You guys know that Kristen and Chloe are like a package deal. They come together. When you think of Chloe, you think of Kristen. When you think of Kristen, you think of Chloe. Um, and it just doesn't have to be one person. It could be like a tribe of people. But in order to do that, like like I said, I was always like drawn to that. Like I always wanted that. I aspired to have somebody like my Scentsy Ride or Die, my Wax Bestie with me. And, you know, in order for that to happen, you have to be willing to have conversation, to be engaged with people, to interact with them, comment with them on Facebook, um, you know, be willing to, when you go to events, Sensi Family Reunion or any team meetings or anything that your director's holding, talk to people, be willing to get engaged. That's where connection happens. Interaction on the team page, as crazy as that sounds, your director's page, don't just be a scroller, guys. Stop being a scroller on your director's page and just participate. Even like you can make somebody's day just by sending some clapping hands emojis like 
you have to be willing to, to engage and connect with other people because at the end of the day, this is a relationship business. And that goes everything with your customers, to your recruits, to your team members, to your sidelines, like your sensey people who become your tribe. It is all about building relationships. But if you're not open, you're a little introvert, and you don't want to talk, trust me, we're all introverted in one way or another. I am way more out of my comfort zone than I've ever been before Sensi. But if you're not willing to talk to people, to engage, then it's not going to happen. And it's funny because Colleen, actually, her and I, our relationship was built on Marco Polo, the app, um, that video chat app. She was messaging me over and over and over and over, and I wouldn't even give her the time of day at first. No, I'm kidding. Um, but she was messaging me, and then all of a sudden, we started connecting on Marco Polo. I got to see her personality. She's from Boston, by the way. I'm from New York. We're not even close to each other. Well, we're on the East Coast, but we're, we don't live near each other. We have children of around the same age. We started to connect, and we're like, oh, man, we're literally the same person. And now she's like my person, and now we're planning like to do family like get-together over the summer with our children. But again, it's not going to happen if you're not open and willing to meeting new people. But it's so important for you to have that person because she's the person when I'm feeling down and discouraged, she keeps me in check. And she's like, listen, girl, this is how it is. And this is how it's going to be. And you got to do this. Like she holds me accountable. And I can never thank her enough for what a blessing she's been in my life through meeting Sensi. If I don't want to cry right now, but like, I seriously like, I mean, just your whole tribe in general, but specifically with her, like she's just somebody who keeps me grounded in this business. And I will tell you, leadership is freaking hard. So when you have somebody with you to help, to, to be there, to, who knows what you're going through. So many of my friends, like don't even talk about the fact that I sell Sensi. Like my best friends growing up, when I, when I'm with them, we don't even talk about that. I, the fact that I sell Sensi, but like, she's somebody who gets me. So find those people. Okay. Next tip, be consistent. Um, again, this, you know, I heard people talking about this before. Your team looks to those who are consistent. Like, if you're not consistent, if you take a month off, if you take a week, uh, I mean, a week, okay, whatever. But if you take, like, a month off and you're not working your business or you're not posting on social media or you're not posting on your team page or you're not connecting, then your team is going to do the same thing. They're going to look to people who are consistent. They're going to go search Katie Farner on YouTube or even look, you know, to Chloe or to Christopher Guidance. How are they going to be looking to you if you're not consistent? You want your team to look to you. Set business hours if you have to. Okay, I said before, you have to clock into your business. Me, every day, I know 15, 20 minutes in the morning, that's what I do. I have two children. If I don't get anything else done after that, well, then that's it. At least I did my, my income producing things. And then hold yourself accountable to that, okay? If you say you're going to work 15 minutes of follow-up every single morning, do it consistently every single morning. Hold yourself accountable, okay? And the very last tip that I have for you because I've been rambling so hard is that leadership is hard. That is, it's, it's literally like truth bomb right now. Leadership is hard. It's very hard. It's not easy. Growing a business is not easy. And oftentimes people come into this and they think that, you know, Sensi is going to be the magic, like, recipe to everything, to all their problems. And when they realize that they actually have to work, then they give up. And not only working, but leading a team trying to inspire people, trying to get people to move who don't want it, trying to feel like you're pouring so much energy posting on your team page and nobody's listening to you. I'm sure those of you who have team pages, smaller, like smaller teams and team pages, you probably know what I'm talking about. Nobody's engaging. 39 people seen my post today, but nobody commented it. Eh, they all suck. I don't know what to like. You get those thoughts in your mind, but I want to tell you that you have to keep going. If you let that affect you, then you know, then, then you're not going to move. You're just going to stay stuck. And as far as the team page goes, it's something that just takes time, especially if you have a smaller team, because you, you just have to keep going. Like for me, like I said, I was a lead consultant, had three people on my team. I would continually post every single day, at least once a day. But that participation and that engagement, as far as Facebook goes, is just something that's just going to take time no matter what. Okay. Another thing is about leadership is that not everybody's going to agree with your leadership style. This is a business of mostly women with emotion and, you know, people get upset or they get, you know, they compare. And so not everybody's going to agree with the things that you do. And so you have to know how to set that boundary within yourself. You have to know the type of team, team culture you want to create. And you just have to know that, like, at the end of the day, your business is something that is 
and, and it, that adds an insane amount of value to your life. And so you just have to continue going, even though you, you may or may not have hard times. There are so many hard times that I can guarantee leaders, your leaders, your directors, your superstar directors go through that you guys won't even know about. Because as leaders, as directors, we put on a happy face and we make it seem like it, everything is, is, you know, lollipops and gumdrops. And it's not. And sometimes we don't talk about that stuff enough. But I think it's because people get scared by that. So we kind of hold back a little bit. But, you know, you have to be transparent and let your team know that these things happen. But leadership is hard. So you just have to know, okay? You have to let go of the outcome. What does that mean? That means that you, if you're relying on... Like if you're focusing too much of, you know, oh, this person didn't promote this month. I was waiting to get my incentive trip points this month. And now all of a sudden they didn't get certified. And so now I'm screwed. Like stop, let go of the outcome of the situation. Lead with love, share what you know, share and build, give it time and just teach them what you know. That's the best thing that you can do as a leader. And no matter what, don't let those discouraging moments stop you, okay? So anyway, I'm going to let you guys go because I totally didn't mean to make this as long as I want. I swear, look at my notes. I literally had 10 points and then I was like, I'm going to talk about this, 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 and this. And I ramble, like I go off on a tangent, so I'm sorry. I'm actually going to um, upload this on the group for you guys. It's the 10 boss um, tips to director. If you guys want, I will put it on here so you have it in writing. I'm very like visual, like I could watch something and then like not remember it later. So I will upload this for you guys if you want to refer back to it. But I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you again so much, Michelle, for putting this together and to Chloe and to Kristen and to all of you amazing directors in this group who have been sharing all these golden nuggets. I love it. And, um, I'm so excited. So thank you so much for having me. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.